the train clanked and rattled through the suburbs of Tokyo on a drowsy spring afternoon. Our car was comparatively empty. A few housewives with their kids in tow. Some old folks going shopping. I gazed at, absently at the drab houses and dust, dusty hedgerows. At one station, the door opened, and, the, and suddenly the afternoon quiet was shattered by a man bellowing, violent, incomprehensible curses. The man staggered into our car. He wore laborer's clothing, and he was big, drunk. and dirty, screaming. He sent a woman holding a baby. So he swung at a woman holding a baby. The blow sent her spinning into the laps of an elderly couple. It was a miracle that the baby was not hurt. Terrified, the couple jumped up and scrambled towards the other end of the car. The laborer aimed a kick at the retreating backs of the old people, but missed as she scuttled to safety. This so enraged the drunk that he grabbed the metal pole at the center of the car and tried to wrench, wrench it from its stanchion. I could see that one of his hands was cut and bleeding. The train lurched ahead. The passengers frozen with fear. I stood up. I was a young man then, some 20 years ago. And I was in pretty good shape. I was putting in a solid eight hours of Aikido training nearly every day, every day for the past, the past three years. I like to throw and grapple. I thought I was tough. The trouble was my martial arts, my martial skill was not, was untested in actual combat. As a student of Aikido, we were not allowed to fight. Aikido, my teacher had said again and again, is the art of reconciliation. Whoever has the mind to fight has broken his connection with the universe. If you try to dominate people, 
you are, are already defeated. We study how to resolve conflict, not how to start it. I listen to his words. I tried hard. I even went so far as to cross the street to avoid the chimpera, the, the pinball punks who lounge around the train station. My forbearance exalted me. I felt very, I felt both tough and holy. In my heart, however, I wanted an absolutely legitimate opportunity where I might save the innocent by dis destroying the guilty. This is it, I said to myself as I got to my feet. People are in danger. If I don't do something fast, that's your mm -hmm. emergency. Somebody will probably get hurt. Seeing me stand up, the drunk recognized a chance to focus his rage. Aha! Uh -huh. He roared. A foreigner. You need a lesson in Japanese banners. I held tightly. I held on lightly to the commuter strap overhead gave him a slow look of disgust and despair and dismissal. I plan to take this turkey apart. But he had to make the first move. I wanted him mad, so I pursed my lips and threw him a, an intimate kiss. All right, he said, you're gonna get a lesson. He gathered up his, he gathered himself for a rush for me. For me. A fraction of a second before he could move, someone shouted, hey! It was ear splitting. I remember the strange, joyous, lilting quality of it. As though you and a friend had been searching for something diligently and he had suddenly found, stumbled on it. Hey, I wheeled to the, my right. The drunk sp sp spun to the, his left. We both stared down at a little old Japanese man. He must have been well into his 70s. This tiny gentleman 
sitting there immaculate in his kimono. He, knew, he took no notice of me, but beamed slightly, beamed delightedly at the laborer, as though he had a most, most important, most welcome secret to share. Come here, he said. in an easy vernacular, beckoning to the drunk. Come here and talk to me. He waved his hand gently. The big man followed as if on a straw a string. He planted his feet belligerently in front of the old gentleman and roared among the clacking wheels. Why the hell should I talk to you? The drunk now had his back to me. If his elbow moved so much as a millimeter, I drop him in his socks. The old man continued to beam at the laborer. What you been drinking? He asked. His eyes sparkled with interest. I been drinking sake. The laborer d d bellowed and it's none of your business. Flecks of spittle spattered the old man. Oh, that's wonderful. The old man said, absolutely wonderful. You see, I love sake too. <laughs> Every night, me and my wife, she's 76. You know, we take a little bottle of sake and we t and take it out into the garden and we sit on the old wooden bench. We watch the sun go down and we get to look it, to see how our persimmon tree is doing. My great-grandfather planted that tree. But I, what we worry about it, so it'll re whether the, it will recover from the ice storm we had last winter. Our tree has done better than I expected, though especially when you consider the poor quality of the soil. It is gratifying to watch when we take our sake and go out to enjoy the evening. Even when it rains. He looks up at the laborer, his eyes twinkling. as he struggled to follow the old man's conversation. The drunk's face began to soften. His fists slowly unclenched. Yeah, he said, I love persimmons too. His voice strands trailed off. Yes, said the old man, smiling. And I'm sure you have a wonderful wife. No, said the laborer. My wife died. <clears throat> Very gently with 
swaying with the motion of the train, the big man began to sob. I don't get no wife. I don't get no home. I don't get no job. I'm so ashamed of myself. Tears roll down his cheeks. A spasm of despair rippled through his body. Now it was my turn. There, standing there, in my well-scrubbed, youthful innocence. Me, my, my make this world safe for democracy righteousness. I felt dirtier than he was. Then the train stopped, arrived at my stop. <clears throat> As the door opened, I heard the old man cluck sympathetically. My, my, he said, it's a difficult position. Indeed, sit down here and tell me about it. I turned my head for one last look. The laborer was sprawled on the seat. His head in the old man's lap. The old man was softly stroking the filthy matted hair. As the train pulled away, I sat down on a bench. What I had wanted to do with muscle had it been accomplished with kind words. I had just seen Aikido tried in combat. And the essence of it was love. I would have, I have, I would have to practice that. With an entirely different spirit. It would be a long time before I could speak about the resolution 